It's an absolutely beautiful day outside today, so what better way to spend it than being inside making electronics? Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Well, I finally have some time to build a DX amplifier, and that's what I'm going to build today. Now, for starters, I'm just going to work on the output stage, which is this part right here, with these four transistors. This piece of metal here is going to be the heat sink, and I've got all the transistors ready, and prepared this for putting the transistors on. As you can see, I've drilled some holes here, and filed it down so it's nice and smooth, because we don't want any sticky-outy bits. Got some screws to put the transistors on, and even though I could just simply put the transistors in, then screw them on, that would be the absolutely most idiotic way to do this. Because all the transistors here have metal backs, and these metal backs of these transistors are also the collector. So if I was to screw all of these directly onto the heatsink, well, this piece of metal, all the collectors would be connected together, and if we refer to the schematic, Say if it was just these two transistors on the heatsink, I would have a direct short between the positive and the negative, and that wouldn't be good. So, what I've got to do is insulate the transistors electrically, but still have the heat come through to the heatsink. And what I'm going to do is use some common household objects to do that. Got some paper, got a bendy straw, and a piece of a plastic lid. I'm going to show you how I use these common household items to do this. Now, firstly, I'm going to cut the paper to shape so it can fit under the transistors. Okay, so this is where one of the transistors is going to go. Actually, that is where this particular transistor is going to go. So just poke a hole in the piece of paper so the screw can go through. Now with the bendy straw, I'm just going to cut a tiny little bit off. This is going to be part of the insulator. Now I've got the tricky task of putting this in the hole of the transistor. This can be a little bit difficult to do, and I'm sorry if it's not on the camera shot. I'll try to keep this in the camera shot while I'm doing this. Okay, you now might be able to see that that is now in the transistor. Doesn't matter that it's poking out of the edges. And with the piece of the plastic lid, I'm just going to cut a little tiny bit out. Make a hole in it. Hopefully without poking a hole in my finger as well. Okay, we have a nice hole in the thing now. I'm going to put the screw through it. I'm going to have to do this off camera because I need to... It's a bit fiddly doing this. Now I've got the screw through the hole. Going to put that into the transistor. And screw the whole thing onto the heat sink. I think my head got in the way there, didn't it? My head's always doing that. So that's one transistor on the heatsink. Now I'm going to test that it's not electrically connected to the heatsink. So I've got my multimeter set on continuity. So I'm going to put one probe onto the collector of the transistor and the other probe onto the metal. And yes, that's very good. No connectivity at all. Now I'm just going to put the other ones on there, and when I've done that, I'll be back. There we go, there's all five transistors put on the heatsink, and none of them are electrically connected. I've just gone through checking that and everything's fine. These two on the end are these two transistors here. I don't know if they need a heatsink, but I've put them on the heatsink anyway, just to be safe. Now these two here are going to be doing most of the heavy work, so obviously they need to be on the heatsink. 
and those are these two transistors here and this one in the middle you might be able to see that it says mount on main heatsink so that's why I've put it there now this transistor is never going to have enough power going through it to put it in any danger of overheating but it is on that heatsink for a damn good reason you see when a transistor gets warm its electrical characteristics change and it conducts more so when it's conducting more there's going to be more current going through it so the transistor gets hotter and as you can imagine that's going to go around in a vicious circle and it's just going to end up making the transistor hotter and hotter and hotter that's also known as thermal runaway so to fix that little problem putting the biasing transistor right there so when these two get warm it will warm up this one and when this transistor is conducting more less current will be flowing through these trans transistors and even in the most extreme conditions this one still won't have enough power going through it to fry it but that's why it's there now I've probably confused a lot of you with what I just said but I know what I'm talking about next thing to do I'm going to wire on all these components and I'm just going to use point to point wiring on this particular bit all the other transistors are going to be put onto a piece of strip board but for this part of the amplifier I'm going to use point to point wiring but I've got to remember that on these big transistors this is the base this is the collector and this is the emitter but on these little ones it's the other way around this is the base this is the collector and this is the emitter anyway I'm going to wire these up and when that's done I shall return right well it's certainly looking a lot more crowded now I've put just about everything onto this piece of metal that could be done with point to point wiring there are a couple of parts that I don't have if we just go over to the schematic for one thing, I don't have a one micro Henry inductor, but I know I've got some spare ferrites around, so I'm just going to wrap some magnet wire around it and see if that see how good that works. But that won't be until I test this thing. Also, I thought I had some 2.2 ohm resistors, but apparently I don't. So I've just had to connect those directly without the resistors. And I have run a simulation of the circuit both with and without those resistors and it doesn't seem to have made any difference at all. So it, I don't think that's going to have any effect on the performance. Anyway, the last thing I'm going to do to this tonight because it is quite late now. It's about nine, 10 past 10 at night. Just going to complete work on this bit here. And I think that will be that for tonight. Whoa. I don't know about you, but to me that looks absolutely wonderful. Anyway, I'm just about out of time. It's a little bit later on now, it's almost 20 past 10 now. But that's everything on this heatsink done. In the next video, I'm going to be working on the rest of the circuit, which is all this stuff around here. But anyway, I've got to get on and double check this to make sure everything's wired up properly. And I'll see you next time where I will be building the rest of this amplifier. So until next time, goodbye.